you're not going to be able to compete with someone doing brand new things if you're doing these archaic, old-fashioned things. So we're talking about Make Me Famous today, a new art documentary from director Brian Vincent. We are Boys on Film. My name is Phil. And beside me, we have Seanorella and we have Matt. From Microfilm, I should say, because you've got a new album out, Matt. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Doesn't want to talk Tell about it. More. I'm <laughs> just not selling it. <laughs> I didn't know if you wanted me to talk about it or not. Oh, we do, have a we newer do. one coming out this summer, so I'll be I'll be on about that one a lot. All right, so make me famous. Uh, a documentary about Edward Brzezinski. Yeah, so it's a documentary about Edward Brzezinski, <laughs> but more widely, um, it's kind of like. It anchors around this artist in early 80s, um, Lower East Side, New York, um, and not only tells their story, but a wider story of what was happening around them in the art and social scene of NYC around that period of time. And it really follows a narrative around Edward Brzezinski and his story around his life and loves and how he operated. And then some quirky things that may have happened later on. Um, which we can talk a little bit about because I'm sure we might touch on some spoilers. But it is quite an interesting take on a ve- on an interesting period of New York in the early 80s, and especially the art scene and the artists who were around at the time. Yeah, I'm not so sure that I'd want my legacy to be all about, you know, me going to a art installation and eating donuts and nearly poisoning myself. Is that what the, that's what the documentary kind of you know I took away from it was not a lot else actually i think the most successful part of the whole doc was the part about the early 80s new york scene and like unfortunately it got exciting when other artists were mentioned more than the artists that the doc is about so they talk about keith herring and basquiat and uh kenny sharf and madonna appears briefly and that whole world is always always really interesting and actually as an artist Brzezinski is actually a pretty good artist as far as painting. I mean, he's, he's not very original because he kind of recreates a lot of early 20th century painting techniques. And he as a person seems kind of interesting because he's kind of odd and a strange man. But I don't know if it's... I don't know if it warrants a 90-minute documentary about his career because he kind of spoiler alert kind of is an asshole to most of the people in his life because he's an alcoholic is that your takeaway too i think yeah he came across as quite bitchy and nasty and rude and quite yeah i I, it's not the sort of person that i'd want to hang out with but then you know this documentary didn't tell me more about him as a nice person the less biographical elements were kind of replaced with interviews with people who knew him and most of them didn't like him and weren't saying very complimentary things about (laughs) him or his art they're like oh his art's fine it's i don't know it's lesser kind of artist and i'm like why are you making this doc if you're not giving a very positive it doesn't always have to be positive but saying that he doesn't have real value in the art world then why are we talking do you know what I mean? See, that made me wonder if he was just doing all of this deliberately just to be famous and cause controversy and be a nasty person. Was he really? That's what I kept thinking. I kept thinking deep down, was he really like that? Or was he just pushing buttons and doing it just to get attention? Because he did seem like an attention seeker for all the wrong reasons, yeah. I think. Sean? Sean? Oh. Uh. <laughs> I think what's really interesting about the documentary... Do you just summed up your review quite well there with that exhale of breath? <laughs> no, 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 that's really unfair. That's really unfair. Take it back. <laughs> I, what I found very interesting was this was a period of time when really, um, this is before you had the likes of Coons and Hugh, like, you know, the like David Zwerner galleries. And again, a bit like when we talked about the menu, art had become a commodity that people bought and was an asset, you know what I mean? This is prior to all of that. And I think you've got an individual who, as you say, Matt, is almost like the epitome of a certain style of artistry. Like if you were like, this is kind of what this guy does, but he was never truly famous. And around him, you've got all of these people who are suddenly popping. So you've got 
Basquiat, you've got Keith Haring, you've got David McDermott, you've got David Warnerovich, you've got all these people like bang, 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 suddenly popping and suddenly flying. And he's kind of going, hold on, I'm part of this scene. I'm doing a group show every two weeks. I'm a bit sad, but I, in a weird way, that's his character, but I don't know whether I can paint the word famous in the way that I would paint the word famous now on an artist. Like, I almost think it was an earlier time around how people became famous from the art world than it is today, you know? And I think a lot of people that do fine art today, and I know a lot of artists who do fine art today, it's a very, very different industry, do you know what I mean, about what you're in, because it is highly commercial. Um, and people want to buy things as assets um, versus buying something that they put on their wall and they loved and they felt something. So I don't know, I, I, I thought it was, you're right, Ma, I think it was a really interesting take on that early 80s in the NYC. That is like a, an interesting, very interesting period of, of art history. Um, and I find, yeah, he's annoying, this chap, he's very annoying and that's his vibe. But in a way, I don't think it's, I don't think it's kind of put on or fake. I just think that's who he was because I don't, I generally don't think the art world had got to the place where we believe and can reference it today because I don't think it was there. And I think people started to become famous and th certain of these artists started to pop and things started to happen. Um, and that, that's just my take on it from a, from a period of art history. Um, and so I'm trying to view it through that lens really, you know. He was destitute. I mean, he had no money. He was living in a squat. He was like spending, he was a true artist in fact, he spent all his money on paint, you know. Like, all of these things come through and I do think it's interesting, you know, this is premise as the story weaves on that he may have faked his death. A lot of people go, well, if you fake your death as an artist, your, your value goes up. Do you know what I mean? And there's this brilliant, where I was like, oh my God, what if he's actually faked his own death to basically create, to make himself famous? Because actually, here we are making a documentary about him and you know, you talk about the donuts, but like suddenly he could become a thing that he never was in the early 80s when he really, really wanted to be. For those elements, I thought it was interesting. So in a way, is it a documentary that's more about his behavior and the period of time rather than about him specifically? It's about that vibe, isn't so. it? It's about that period of time. It's not, it's not so much about him. And I think that's why I felt a little bit shortchanged because I didn't really get that much from him. I wanted to see more of his art. I wanted to see like hundreds of images of his art. They would do it, flash it every once in a while, but you, re you didn't really get a clear vision. It was more about him going to parties or him like hanging out with certain people. And like, there was more of that than there was of the actual art. Yeah. That, I kind of missed that. And I, I thought, but still, I thought the first two thirds of the film were the most interesting. I thought the ending were, which could have been really interesting where the, his friends, I guess, from way back when, currently want to go find what, uh, what happened to him. So they go, cause he moved to Europe, apparently they heard that. And one of his friends saw, him, like met him for a brief period of time in Berlin and he was living in a squat and destitute and kind of an alcoholic. And then they found out that he died probably so they investigate that, but it seems very anticlimactic by the time they find out what happened to him. And it just kind of is like, oh, so nothing really ever happened to him after yeah, he left New York. damp scrib. It was, it was just, poof. <laughs> it, it, just like, you're so right. Oh, he died. You're so right. <laughs> you're so right, because I think it is, for me, the reason why I enjoyed it is because I enjoy that period of art history. So actually, I yeah, like talking heads with like, I was at a party for blah, 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 and he was there. So all the references were often like, there's this thing like, I met, I was at Danceteria or I was here and he happened to be there. It wasn't anchored around him. People were just talking heads saying, this is what was happening in the scene and this is kind of what happened. So it's really, really like, almost like this film, this documentary in a way, because it talks about him, his relationship with Peter Hoosier, all that kind of stuff, what was happening in the early eighties in New York. Like it's, Super interesting. So I do think this is a very interesting period of time and it is macro to the New York scene and micro to Edward's story. But actually, I think what I was drawn to was the macro New York scene. And I was a bit like, I don't know who this person is, but this is a cool little story. I agree with that, Sean. And I think it could have worked if, it, if the artist in question was someone like David Warnerovich, who's 
much more interesting of an artist than Brzezinski is because he was doing relatively new things at the time. And, and his work, a lot of it centered around AIDS and that was a new thing in the eighties. So his work had more relevancy to what was going on. It was more interesting. And Brzezinski was painting pictures like they did in 1921. So, Oh, here's a, here's a portrait of someone, an oil painting of someone sitting in a chair. That's not super interesting in, you know, 1985, but David Warnerovich taking a picture of him with his lips sewn up and then the written statement about what he's going through with his disease is a lot more, has a lot more heft to it and interest. And that's why a documentary about him would be so much more interesting than a documentary about a kind of traditionalist artist who's trying to be famous at the same time as people like Keith Haring and Basquiat, who were all doing really new things that were very fresh and exciting. You're not going to be able to compete with someone doing brand new things if you're doing these archaic, old fashioned things. You know what I mean? Yeah. I may, and, and you're, Matt, you're right, because maybe that's what we have the beauty of hindsight, right? So we look at it and go, this was never. But like, it was a period of time where what succeeded was the difference. So someone would go, I'm doing something entirely different to everyone else, and they would have their moment in the sun. And you're right, in some way, He's an impressionist, he's a traditional impressionist, you know, and a portrait artist, which is actually super traditional. So in a way, at some point I'm gonna make it because I have these skills and talents. But the art world was going, actually what we want is something we've never seen before. So star rating, I'm afraid guys, I didn't enjoy it. It's a two for me. Yeah, I'm gonna give it a three because like Sean said, I was more interested in the world that it was revolving around and less about him as a, as a person or an artist. That pushed it through, for, to a three. If it was just him alone with less imagery of the social scene he was in, it would definitely be a two because I don't think he holds enough interest for a whole feature length documentary. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I think you're spot on, Matt. What you said, three, and everything you said about the three. So make me famous. Let us know if you've seen it. Leave a comment.